Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to our second uh, full content day of the LSX World Congress uh, and to our next presentation session uh, focused on Saxony and building Europe's cell and gene therapy hub. Um, please do ask any questions that you have throughout the presentations for our uh, panel of experts today from the Saxony region um, in the Q&A and comments section to the right of the video here. Um, I'll be uh, answering some Q&A live uh, shortly after the presentation, but uh, for now, uh, it's nice to hand you over to uh, Barbara Vigat from Saxony Economic Development Corporation. Barbara, the stage is yours. Thank you, Josh, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our Saxony session. Um, in the beginning, I would like to introduce uh, the business location Saxony and um, its life sciences. So first of all, let's um, have a look where we are located. Saxony is located in the eastern part of Germany. We have um, close uh, or we have border to Poland and Czech Republic and in Saxony 4.07 million people are living. Our main capitals, our main cities with the state capital Dresden um, and Leipzig are having over 550,000 people living in. And also in these two cities, Leipzig and Dresden, most of the life sciences, especially cell and gene therapy is going on. Um, having a look into Saxony's infrastructure, I would like to highlight Leipzig here because here we find Europe's most modern air cargo hub with a 24-7 service. And um, therefore companies like World Korea um, are also located um, in Leipzig um, to support in the medical logistics process, especially for the biopharmaceutical industry. And Dresden as well as Leipzig are very well connected um, to our um, German capital Berlin, as well as to the Czech Republic capital Prague with ICE and um, the German autobahns. Also from Leipzig, you can reach very fast with ICE connection, Munich and Frankfurt. Saxony um, is um, has increased or Saxony's economy has increased in the last 20 year by more than 30%. Um, so it has one of the highest GDP growth all over Germany. And Saxony is also a top location for um, multinational companies like GSK or Global Foundries and also BMW. So as you can see, our main industrial sectors are automotive or even microelectronics, but our growing and future sectors are lying in the biotech and medtech. So let's get an overview of the life science sector here in Saxony. We have 300 plus companies um, in the field of biotech, pharma and medtech with more than 15,000 people working and an annual sales of 1.9 billion euros. In addition, around 450 companies with more than 40,000 um, employees are working as suppliers and service providers in the life science sector, for example, in a metalworking industry or plastic technologies. And 30 plus um, research institutions and interdisciplinary innovation centers are here in Saxony, for example, in the fields of regenerative um, medicine or molecular bioengineering. And the whole community is held together by our cluster and network organization BioSaxony with more than 120 members. They act like a lobby for their members and support the life science um, industry very much. And a new cluster is coming up right now, the Saxosa cluster. So universities from Dresden, Leipzig, and also Chemnitz join forces together with the Fraunhofer Institute for Cell Therapy and Immunology um, to develop new production methods and applications for innovative cell and gene therapies. Later on, we will hear more on this. 
Then um, I would like to show you an overview um, of Saxony's training and research infrastructure. All over Saxony, we have six universities which provide special masters and bachelor's programs um, in the field of life science, like biomedical engineering, also digital health as a topic and um, biotechnology itself. And we also have international doctoral programs in Dresden and Leipzig. So um, talents from all over the world are coming here to Saxony. And what is also seeable in this map that we have um, a lot of non-university research institutions, which are very important and um, have um, and well renowned all over the world, like the Helmholtz facilities, um, the Fraunhofer and the Max Planck um, institutes. And all these um, non-university research institutes have um, uh, departments here in Saxony in the field of life sciences. So now I would like um, to show you two testimonials. Um, one is um, the GlaxoSmithKline and the site director, um, Dr. Schönfelder, um, told us um, two important aspects in her statement here. She said in um, Saxony and Dresden, it was um, possible to find motivated and passionate people. And um, in the last years, um, they did numerous of um, investments to modern their infrastructure. And these investments uh, were supported by the investment grants of the state of Saxony. So GSK um, is uh, manufacturing the influenza vaccines here in Dresden and around 750 people working in GSK. Another testimonial is from Leipzig, from the Genewitz. Genewitz installed a European headquarters in Leipzig and um, one of the uh, most important reasons uh, was exactly the logistics um, or the favorable logistic place in, in Leipzig with the DHL hub and also the truly competitive prices over here in, in Leipzig. You will hear more about this later from my colleague. Genewitz is a leading global provider of genomic services. They have lab operations all over the world. And now they have the headquarter, um, the European headquarter in Leipzig. And they also created a lot of jobs in the last years. And Dr. Stangny, the senior director of Genewitz, um, told us um, that the finding of talents, the recruiting of talents, was never a problem over here in Leipzig. Then I want to go to my last slide. Um, it's about um, the incentives which are available in Saxony um, in different um, fields. One is um, incentives for investments. So if a company decides um, to build up a subsidiary over here, we can support the company with investment grants. Companies who are very active in the field of R&D, tech transfer or innovation can be su supported with several programs, um, which you can see over here. And what is also important, for example, the participation in international trade shows um, can be also supported in the last column you will see about this. So if there are any questions about um, the presentation I just made and especially about the incentives, um, please don't hesitate and just uh, approach us via the chat function or just contact us afterwards. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you, Barbara. Uh, and now I'd like to hand you over to Axel Kulik uh, from Invest Region Leipzig, Axel. Well, thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today and your interest in learning what's going on in Saxony's life sciences sector. Um, I would like to kick off with a few key facts about Leipzig. Um, so Leipzig clearly is one of the hidden champions in global supply chains, very much owing due to DHL's 
um, European hub, which is located here and connects Leipzig directly and quite literally overnight to the North American uh, DHL hub in Cincinnati, as well as the North Asian one in Shanghai. It is one of uh, Europe's leading logistics regions today. And as you can see, it is quite literally located at the very center of Central Europe. Um, it doesn't come as a surprise uh, that it is also the center of gravity for the uh, economic region, which is labeled Central German Metropolitan Region, which um, um, comprises about one, uh, 8.5 million inhabitants. It also happens to be the commuter center of gravity for that region with about 100,000 daily inbound commuters. Um, the city as such now has 600,000 people living here. It is expected to grow by another 50,000 within the next 10 years. Um, that makes Leipzig Germany's fastest growing city. And it is also happens to be Germany's youngest city uh, with currently close to 25% of all households being under 30. That of course um, is reason why uh, Leipzig has become one of the most dynamic cities in all of Germany in terms of population growth, but also in terms of economic growth and job creation. Leipzig has always been a center for higher education with strong talent pipelines, especially in the life sciences. And also Leipzig's economy happens to be powered by the digital and tech, the mobility, the energy and the life sciences sectors in particular. Um, the life sciences sector and the healthcare sector are now the strongest sectors in all of Leipzig um, just built 20 years ago from scratch. The cluster now employs approximately 45,000 people. Um, within a two hour radius, there are close to 300 dedicated biomedical companies located. Um, when, when the life sciences cluster was created in, in Leipzig just 20 years ago, the stated aim was to be a cluster for the rapid translation of biomedical innovation into Germany's as well as the EU's healthcare systems. If, if you care to look at the research strength and innovation strength we have here, you can clearly see that the cluster has followed the turn in the life sciences, now focusing on all things lifestyle disease, um, innovation in diagnostics, um, surgical innovation in particular, everything that has to do with uh, computer system services and systems. And of course, one of the major focus areas is all things regenerative and precision medicine. You will hear a bit more about that from Dr. Thomas Traveler in a few minutes. Um, also, we happen to have four of the EU's largest biobanks located here. Just, just to mention the Leipzig Medical Biobank called LIFE, uh, WIDA 34, one of Europe's largest um, stem cell banks, um, plus blood bank of the University of Leipzig and the HEMA AG, which is one of the largest private blood banks in all of Europe. Um, why is that important? Because it is more or less paving the way to all things systems biomedicine and therefore a pathway or the foundation for precision medicine. As you can see, it ties in nicely with uh, the various initiatives, organizations and institutions that now drive forward the digital transformation of medicine and healthcare. Um, you may read that up after this presentation, um, but just to mention here, we cover all things from, from healthcare AI to big data analytics, to computer assisted diagnostics, very into how to digitally transform manufacturing processes at larger scales. <clears throat> um, what's quite interesting about Leipzig's um, 
Life Sciences Cluster is that it is also quite physically located at the center of the city, uh, built on the old trade fair grounds. You can see all the majorly important um, life sciences institutions, be it, be it the Faculty of Medicine from the Leipzig University, plus uh, our incubation and acceleration um, programs, plus um, the likes of the Fraunhofer Institute for Cell Therapy and Immunology are densely co-located, uh, making for a very manageable ecosystem and actually fostering personal interaction as well as collaboration between the various institutes. I would like to mention um, what's going on here. Uh, the, the groundwork for, for the life sciences um, campus, the BioCity campus, was laid 20 years ago, and we are now seeing the third expansion phase, which is quite interesting. What, what is going on here is we have various developments um, underway at different stages. Uh, we will create many more integrated lab and office buildings for, you know, biotech startups as well as legacy companies that want to benefit from our cluster here. So one of them would be the City Lab 12, which translates to 1-2, um, but also, which is quite a striking architectural feat here, is the former Soviet pavilion. It used to be an old uh, trade fair hall, which will be converted into a biotech dedicated um, um, building, um, which clearly uh, will um, make available lots of additional lab space and office space and can also be purpose built to certain customers and, and companies that want to locate here. Uh, thirdly, um, there's even more development space available at this campus. Um, companies that may want to consider building new production facilities can do so. Um, given that this is all owned by the city, um, you can buy up land for development for very generous uh, tariffs and costs. Let me just, just um, finish with a bit on what we do as an organization. Well, we are your, your typical economic development uh, agency helping overseas companies uh, with, you know, throughout the whole site selection uh, process, starting with finding suitable offices, lab space, or even development um, lots. Also, we, which I think is the most important part about the life sciences sector, help you get in touch with the right partners, be it for clinical trials, for, for product development, or for manufacturing. And also we can help you with recruitment strategies in the region. And of course, last but not least, also help you uh, navigate all the red tape involved in setting up an overseas business and ideally also applying for funding and incentives available. So yeah, I'll wrap up with this and uh, please feel free to, to ask any questions during the session or afterwards. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Axel. And now to like to hand you over to our uh, third presenter, uh, Thomas Tradler. Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me the chance uh, to give a talk here. And I also obviously have to start with an excuse as I won't be able to deliver a video signal to you. The reason is very, very, very simple. I currently in the home office due to the pandemia situation. I'm also the proud dad of three uh, kids taking uh, online school and university lessons at the time being. So obviously we all have to share our internet connection with each other. And uh, uh, that's just the reason why I will be more than happy if even the, the at least the audio signal uh, will work. So I hope you can, can understand me. Um, with the next few slides, I would like to introduce you to actually two things. First of all, uh, with a very few, few slides, um, our frown of Institute for Safety and Technology, which also has been um, yeah, mentioned in the, 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 the talks of the other speakers. And second, and in particular, I would like to focus on introducing to one of our most recent uh, initiatives in the area of cell and gene therapy, attempting to uh, make Germany and in particular Saxony, uh, the new lighthouse for cell and gene therapy uh, in Europe. But now 
let's uh, start. And I, I would like to start with giving an overview about uh, our parent organization. So the Fraunhofer ICI, which stands for Immunology and Cell Therapy, is a, a member of the large and happy family of Fraunhofer Institutes. We are uh, the world's uh, largest uh, organization for applied research with uh, about 70 institutes, almost 30,000 people, and a quite impressive annual research budget. And we do have a very clear mission, which is to help the industry to develop successful products and technologies. And we are doing so by providing the industry with everything they may need to develop successful uh, products, what uh, uh, is comprising technologies, product candidates, services, problem solutions, troubleshooting things, whatever the industry may need. And Fraunhofer uh, uh, actually has established uh, a worldwide, a global uh, presence. And we do applied research in almost every technology area. You can imagine what is uh, comprising a pretty wide scope of things from IT uh, to energy, defense systems, materials, and a number of other things, including the uh, life science uh, area. And the next slide gives you uh, just a very few core facts about uh, uh, Fraunhofer ICI, about my institute. So uh, we are a pretty large institute, so with about uh, 600 plus um, uh, people headquartered in Leipzig in the beautiful free state of Saxony. However, we also uh, operate subsidiaries in other regions of uh, Germany. We also do have an international presence in Korea. And uh, we realize applied research projects in four main business units, with the major business unit by far being the cell and gene therapy area. However, we also uh, are, how to say, pursuing activities in drug and vaccine development for human and veterinary medicine. We also uh, do have activities in uh, diagnostics development. And uh, we also are developing extra corporal therapies together with international industry partners. And to give you an idea about the scale of operations, so even last year, 2019, um, uh, we had uh, businesses with about 184 different industry partners and about 800 international academic uh, uh, partners. So, and as you can see on the right side of the slides, we also uh, do have quite a nice buildings. So, and this is just an overview about the business unit cell and gene therapy at Fraunhofer ASI. I, I don't want uh, to go that much into, into detail. Uh, so uh, just, uh, just in a nutshell, right? So what you can take uh, on the left side of the slide is that uh, our business and this business unit is actually based on two pillars with the first pillar being the orange labeled here fee for service area. In this area, are we uh, offering uh, a, a wide scope of services and technologies to our industry partners, which is actually covering the entire early value chain and safety be development, right? So we are offering everything in the area of discovery, early development, GLP, safety, efficacy, uh, testing. And then we also do the uh, GMP process development. We are optimizing uh, 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 GMP manufacturing process. We also can, can do the automation of cell therapy manufacturing processes. And last but not least, we also uh, operate one of Europe's largest uh, clean room facilities for the large scale manufacturing of um, cell and gene therapies. And as you can see, I just uh, uh, gave you a number of a uh, couple of logos from our uh, reference partners. So uh, Novartis among them. We are uh, manufacturing Novartis for Kimraya for Novartis for uh, European patients. However, we do also do have ongoing cooperations in this area with a number of other very well renowned companies. And the second pillar labeled in blue is the uh, licensing proprietary developments uh, area. So here we are developing complementary technologies, among them new IPS C generation methods, couple of other things. And we also are attempting to develop an own pipeline of proprietary cell and gene therapy product candidates. And our pipeline spans uh, quite a couple of uh, products from uh, early stage clinical things to very, very early stage discovery viral vectors for, uh, for, for in vivo gene therapies, just for example. So that's it about uh, Fraunhofer ASI. And now, as I promised to you, uh, would I like to introduce you 
to one of our most recent initiatives uh, in uh, the area of cell and gene therapies. And this is the uh, Saxon cell cluster in Saxony, which is uh, currently about to, um, yeah, to, 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 to grow uh, uh, successfully as we think, right? And Saxon cell um, is uh, just representing uh, an acad academia industry cluster having the mission to bring efficient, safe, and affordable cell and gene therapies to patients who are suffering from serious diseases. And all of us know that this is an, an urgent demand as despite of decades of research and billions of dollars and, and euros spent on, on research in just, for example, cancer diseases, there is still a very, very high unmet medical need and uh, a large number of patients are um, urgently waiting for new therapeutic options. And the strategy to uh, reach our goals will be uh, that we uh, will just bring together excellent fundamental and applied research expertise in Saxony, everything what's available in Saxony, as you heard it from the other speakers, uh, there's a lot of things available with industry resources and know-how as well as further national and international partners. And thus we think uh, we will become the German cell and gene therapy lighthouse with highest international visibility. We do have very well renowned uh, core partners on board, Fraunhofer ASII among them, but also the universities of Leipzig and uh, Dresden. We uh, successfully participated with our cluster idea in the German nationwide clusters for future competition uh, first round. And uh, now we, uh, yeah, just a while ago, we already submitted our final round application and uh, we hope that we'll get selected by the German Federal Ministry for Science and Education uh, early. Uh, this year and the outlook is uh, promising of course so if we will get approval for our initiative from the BMBF then we will get uh, at least 45 million euro funding what helps us to initiate, initiate quite a number of uh, very promising projects together with our partners right and uh, yeah I again don't want to go that much into detail you heard already from the other speakers that uh, Saxony certainly is among the, um, the, 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 the best regions in, in Europe, if you want uh, to do innovative uh, research in, in, in life sciences. So uh, what we bring together here in Saxony, is just uh, cutting edge fundamental and applied research expertise and, and, and assets, so to say, uh, touching a number of uh, pretty interesting areas among them, new genome editing technologies. So everything what comes behind uh, CRISPR-Cas. So the one or other of you may know about all the current early ongoing patent issues, things like that. We also are, uh, uh, have available technologies uh, for new origin specific viral vectors for in vivo gene therapy. We are developing next generation CAR and K therapies. We uh, do have uh, developed new technologies, new methods for the antibody protein design for improved next very next generation CARs, CARs standing for chimeric antigen uh, receptors. And we do have developed an exceptional security system for CAR T cells, the so-called Unicar technology, which to our knowledge is uh, worldwide unique and also may represent the base for a very promising generation of next generation CAR uh, cells. So excellent academic and industry partners come together. We do have one of Europe's largest, and as I mentioned already, most experienced facilities for the GMP manufacturing of ATMPs. And last but not least, we also do have special expertise at a couple of uh, centers in uh, Saxony in digital medicine and artificial intelligence, which also will join uh, or, are, or have already joined our um, efforts. And the main goals of Saxony, as I mentioned already, will be um, the efficient, the development of efficient, safe and affordable uh, cell and gene therapies. So uh, we uh, think we will be able to achieve a very efficient, a quick translation from bench um, uh, to the bed of the patient. And uh, among them are a couple of uh, sub goals, so to say. So first of all, we are going to uh, develop a new innovative platform technology for cell and gene uh, uh, therapy, among them gene editing, improved viral vectors and other things. We are going to develop a pipeline of innovative cell and gene therapies. We will focus with further research efforts on the GMP compliant automation of selfie manufacturing in QC. So you may have heard about all the uh, current COX issues uh, with the resulting from the very high among them, very high 
manufacturing costs for cell and gene therapies, we think automation of manufacturing and quality control might represent a solution. And so we are going to focus on this area as well. We are going to, um, to involve artificial intelligence methods to improve patient stratification and personalized treatments. We will generate just as a, how to say, kind of a complementary uh, program and optimal and innovation oriented environment in our uh, cluster, which is uh, attempting to facilitate at all levels a really an innovation plan and innovation centered culture and bringing this idea of fostering innovation into every head uh, within our cluster. And uh, we also will do have uh, and will we'll, we'll start, so to say, additional efforts to do something for um, the, the intensified uh, education and qualification of cell and gene therapy qualified staff. Uh, uh, one of the, 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 the other speakers told you already about the very good availability of uh, uh, well-qualified staff in Saxony. And uh, you may know that uh, GMP qualified staff, this is kind of representing a bottleneck in many regions of Europe and even in the States. And so we in Saxony, we uh, uh, realized that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, an, an area and that uh, and this education thing where we can do something. And so we opened already kind of a, of a school for um, the, the further education of uh, uh, technicians and, and scientists regarding the, the work in, in cleaning rooms and guarding how to comply with GMP roles. So making them fit, so to say, um, to uh, to to work at cell and gene therapy companies, right? So this is something what we also contribute just besides all the other more uh, science related things. And last but not least, our final and the ultimate goal, so to say, is uh, that we are attempting together with our um, uh, partners uh, from the economic promotion agencies of uh, Saxony and Leipzig and all the others to further increase the attractiveness of Saxony for international partners and investment. And we think we are on a very good way to do so. Last but not least, what are benefits for the industry? So I, I actually, I, I can't list all of them simply due to, to time um, uh, reasons. However, just to give you a few examples. So what uh, our Saxel cluster is intending to deliver to our industry partners, we will give them access to innovative product candidates and technologies, what uh, uh, might be, be important. For, for some of them, we will give them access to uh, infrastructure, expertise, and also uh, the funding. We will give them the chance to participate in joint development projects with our renowned research partners already mentioned. Uh, some of them, we give them the, the chance to substantially uh, increase their impact and visibility in the rapidly developing market of gene and cell-based therapies by becoming a prominent member of our sexual cluster. We'll give them the chance by becoming part of our clusters network to uh, take part in our in initiative, in our initiative, so to say, to um, yeah, to actually to exert an impact on the regulatory environment and to also have an impact on new political initiatives regarding regulation of certain gene therapies. We will uh, give them the chance to participate in training education activities. I already, meant, already mentioned some of them, and as a matter of course, we also will uh, offer the chance to partner with uh, innovative uh, startup companies. So that's uh, basically it. And now I yeah, reached the end of my presentation. Hold, I could tell you something about our sex as well, what sounds promising to you. And uh, so whenever there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. And it would be more than happy if I could raise some interest in your side for our beautiful free state of Saxony and for our sex cell cluster. And uh, yeah, see you in Saxony. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so now we uh, do have time for a couple of questions, uh, and I have a couple that I, I was keen to ask after uh, viewing those presentations, really. Um, so uh, firstly, and I guess this is uh, to all of you, really, um, obviously a lot of great information in there about um, the, the regions and the Fraunhofer Institute and, and so much work going on um, across the life sciences space. Um, but I guess my question, and, and knowing the sort of audience who will be listening, is um, how do you uh, feel you best practically support the companies um, uh, who, who might be interested in, in the Leipzig region. Uh, maybe I could hand over to Barbara first. Um, yes, uh, we support and um, assist um, companies and investors um, from all over the world from their initial idea 
um, all the way um, to the implementation, for example, of their business setup or implementation of their cooperation project. So that means um, we as um, a state-owned company, um, as well as the Invest Region Leipzig, have um, the contacts to the regional stakeholders and also to the authorities, also political context, uh, contact. Um, so we can bring the companies here together in, in every need or in, yeah, in every question what they have. And we also help them to find um, the right location, the right site. And uh, what is also very important for the companies, we help them to, um, to find the right incentives for them. Whether they are doing investments or R&D projects, um, there is always something what we can offer to the companies. Axel? Yeah, what I'd like to, to, to add to this, I think oftentimes, you know, getting a feel for an overseas business location or potential business location can be hard. So I think it does make sense to have some kind of shepherd in place that can actually put you in touch with the relevant players and, and you know, help you with some 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 background information on how things work um, you know you always have the very formal processes in place for applying for funding for example and all that stuff but when it comes to getting a feel for for what a you know cluster for any given sector is like i think it makes most sense to to directly get in touch and that's why we we've been seriously trying to to build you know various let's say soft lending offerings, um, you know, especially for let's say health tech companies, oftentimes it's really hard for them to, to, to get into a new market right away. So, so we, th through our partner network, you can, you know, for very low costs, um, get, get a desk, get a co-working space, get a feel for what it's like to, to meet other people, other companies already active here. Same applies to biotech companies. As I mentioned during my presentation um, with the um, original BioCity building, that, that is pretty much a dedicated space for initially biotech spin-offs or startups where they find, you know, great conditions to work in a managed environment with close contact to, to all the relevant life sciences players, be it, be it research and development, but also, you know, like potential um, health insurance partners, uh, regulators and all that stuff. So, so, so I think um, here in, in Saxony, we, we are really trying hard to build the perfect environment for companies to, to hit the ground running when, when deciding to access the German healthcare or European healthcare markets. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. And then Thomas, anything to, to add there? Yeah, I'm not sure if I can add something. Uh, so I mentioned already that uh, collaborating with the industry and supporting the industry with everything they may need to develop successful product, uh, products eventually. This is actually at the heart of Fraunhofer, right? So this is our core mission and we would be more than happy to do this uh, for, 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 for more and more companies uh, worldwide, globally. Fantastic. Um, and I do have one, one last question. I guess we'll come to, to the end here. Um, please do keep on asking your questions in, in the Q&A section to the right here, and uh, they can be answered live uh, and throughout the event, indeed, if you're watching this uh, at a later date. Um, but um, I guess to sort of sum up uh, the sort of, uh, I guess, main thrust of, of this whole uh, session today, um, I guess to all of you, what do you feel is the, the real USP of Saxony? Um, and what do you see for the real key sort of core reasons for the life sciences ecosystem to be investing in, to, to be building roots in and working uh, in Saxony? Uh, maybe again uh, to, to Barbara uh, for your final thoughts. Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, I guess, I would like to start with some history. Um, 20 years ago, um, the Saxony uh, politicians decided to support biotechnology um, a lot. So we started a biotechnology offensive here. And um, by now, more than 1 billion euros have been invested in this um, biotechnology offensive. And therefore, also, in Leipzig, um, the incubator BioCity was built, and in Dresden, the Bio Innovation Center, as Axel already mentioned, to give them a soft landing here in Saxony and to support. So 
I would say infrastructure is perfect in Saxony in terms of logistics or incubator system and also in terms of research infrastructure, um, especially um, in the cell and gene therapy. Next, um, we have the talent over here. Talent in terms of, um, or let's say available talent in terms of not only bachelor, mar uh, masters and PhDs, um, but also technicians like um, Thomas already mentioned in his uh, presentation. Um, and the third uh, point is um, the grant system, which is available here in Saxony, that we can support the companies, um, uh, the biotech companies, medtech companies, which come over here to do collaborations and um, set up their businesses here that we are available um, or that we are able to support to support them with our grant system. So I think these three points um, are very unique and are very special here for Saxony. Fantastic. And uh, Axel? Yeah, I, I can only uh, agree to this. I think in, in terms of, you know, have, having an innovation driven, not only economy, but also population, let's face it, um, Saxony and, and Leipzig had to completely rebuild after the fall of the wall being in the former East, so that they had to make a serious effort to reinvent themselves. And I think you know, given that that people here are, are quite ambitious and 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 forward looking, I think they made some right choices by by focusing on you know forward and 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 future orientated uh, sectors and industries instead of trying to catch up with you know things like uh, old school manufacturing and stuff. So 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 people really really you know put the money where their mouth is here and 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 are serious about you know ma making funding available supporting through through support services or additional incentives so so i think yeah saxony definitely is serious about the life sciences sector Wonderful. And I guess to close off, Thomas, um, sorry, uh, I guess I've probably made this the, the hardest for you uh, coming to you last uh, for, for both of these questions. But any final thoughts from yourself on uh, on the USP of Saxony? Yeah, so <laughs> so my, my uh, thought about this would be uh, that the most important USP of Saxony, uh, from my point of view, as I said, is that we all are Saxon patriots, right? So uh, there is, and this is what, what my co-speakers mentioned already, uh, there is a very efficient cooperation culture in Saxony comprising uh, the Saxon provincial government, all the city governments, all the economic promotion agencies, uh, all the, the academic partners, and also our industry partners, right? So we all are collaborating with each other in, a, in the highest possible uh, efficient manner and this is something what from my point of view and actually i worked already in other regions of germany and also in other countries uh, globally this is what is really unique for saxony and what i think what can be really helpful for uh, new partners uh, considering to establish a footprint here in saxony yeah. thank you very much <laughs> Wonderful. Well, um, thank you all to, to, to Axel, to Thomas, to, to Barbara. Um, please do continue the conversation in the chat and questions function and, and indeed uh, sort of invite to, to connect with any of our speakers today. Uh, and you can schedule meetings uh, throughout the rest of the week and indeed next week as well on the platform. Um, we're back again at 12 um, with our uh, session, United Industry Front Partnerships to Defeat the Pandemic. Uh, we were talking about vaccines earlier, I think, in, in, uh, in Barbara's presentation there. I'm delighted to be being joined by BioNTech, uh, Sanofi, GS UK vaccines and Pfizer to discuss their uh, work in uh, getting us uh, to, to the vaccines that we're seeing starting to be rolled out for, for the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, see you again at 12. Thank you all again to our speakers and uh, look forward to speaking to you all too.